Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Getting Your House Ready to Sell in Four Easy Steps. My name is Kelly Vaughn. I am a realtor here in McKinney, and I hold the Certified Home Marketing Specialist designation, among others, and I'm like, super excited for you to join us today and learn how to get your house ready to sell in four easy steps. So hope you have a pen and paper ready because uh, we've got some good information for you today. Um, real quick, a little bit about us. We are McKinney-based real estate agents serving the northern suburbs of the Dallas area. We're a, a husband and wife team. My husband, Bill, is my partner. And we have been serving clients in our community since 2014. The key to selling your home successfully, the key to home selling success is obviously to sell quickly for top dollar with a minimum of inconvenience. Um, you have to remember that you can't control the market, but you can control how your house is received by the market. So, you can't control whether there's a lot of houses on the market or not a lot of houses, um, but how you present your house and how you price your house are the two most critical elements of ensuring success for your home marketing. And pricing is something that is um, really best talked about on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So today we're gonna talk about how your house is presented. When you're selling your home, one of the most critical things is to think like a buyer. There was a recent national survey of home buyers that found that 78% of a buyer's criteria is out of your control as a homeowner, meaning the location of your home and the size of your home really aren't in your control, but that is almost 80% of what a buyer is looking for. But the good news is, is that you have direct control over 22% of the buyer's criteria. And that is curb appeal, condition, cleanliness or odors, lighting and decor. So when buyers buy, they buy the perception of what life will be like in your house. And you can completely control how they perceive your house from the second they drive up. So you are in control of the entire experience that they have when they are viewing your home or when they are looking at the pictures of your home. So, and that is critical. That is absolutely critical to make sure that people come to see your house. You can't control where it's located. You can't control how many bedrooms or how many bathrooms or how big it is, but you can control from the second they pull those pictures up online, how they perceive your home and what they think life will be like living in the house. So step number one in how to get your house ready is to declutter. The goal of this step is to make sure that buyers feel the true spaciousness of your house. So you're gonna clear out and organize everything. You're gonna clear out your closets. You're gonna clear out your garage, your drawers, your cabinets anything that a homeowner that a buyer is going to see when they walk in your house you want to make sure that it is um, that they see the depth of the space in your cabinets you want to make sure that they see the depth of space in your closets in the garage now if you've got boxes in your garage because you are moving that's okay buyers understand that but the old bikes the old baby items the um, old ski equipment, the stuff that you never use anymore that you just threw in the garage, go ahead and make a decision about that. And that decision is either going to be keep, toss, or donate. Um, and if all else fails, ask yourself, do I love this item enough to pay to move it? That generally for, at least for me, when we were moving was the, the final straw is if, if I love it enough to pay to move it, then I'm gonna keep it. If I don't, then I need to make a decision about it. Um, step two, depersonalize or neutralize your house. This, the goal of this step is to make sure that your house appeals to the most buyers possible. 
So you're gonna pre-pack all your precious or valuable items. Go ahead, those things are particular to you. Go ahead and put those away, pre-pack them because you are going to be moving and make sure that they are secure. Um, pets, we love our pets. I love my pets, but if I am trying to sell my house, I am going to remove all traces of my pets because what you will find is that over 60% of buyers either do not have pets or they are afraid of them. So if they do not have pets, then they're gonna be a little bit put off by the sight of pets in your house. And if they're afraid of them, or they have medical reasons not to like them, then they are going to rule your house out immediately and possibly not even come through the door. So you wanna make sure that the traces of Fido and Fluffy are put away for all showings. Take your pets, walk them during the showing, put them in doggy daycare, board them, um, ship them over to a friend's house, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your house appeals to as many people as possible. And unfortunately, some people are not animal people. Um, decor choices. I know that when you decorated your home, you spent a lot of time making it where you like to be and where you are comfortable being. And the goal when you are selling your house is actually the complete opposite of that. You wanna make it as neutral as possible to appeal to as many people as possible. So that red accent wall that you love, that you spent hours painting, um, your realtor is probably gonna ask you to um, take that down or to bring the color down a little bit. Um, you might have a ton of collections of, let's say you're, you love Disney World and you've got Disney stuff from all your trips throughout your childhood, and you've taken your family multiple times, that you wanna make sure, again, that people see your house, not your stuff in your house. So photos and collections, go ahead and pre-pack those. You can leave a few family photos out um, if they are particularly meaningful to you, but again, you wanna make sure that people see your house, and not get distracted by your photos of your trips to Europe or your trips to Disney World and, um, you know, or photos of your babies, things like that. Anything that's super personal and precious to you, go ahead and pre-pack that, make it secure. That includes your pets, unfortunately. Ideally, you'll, um, send the pets to live with grandma and grandpa while you're showing the house, but um, that is obviously not possible all the time. So you just wanna make sure that, that your house is as um, open and inviting to as many people as possible. Step three, do the little things. The goal of this step is to show buyers that your house has been well-maintained. Um, clean to sell. Clean to sell is very different than cleaning for company. Clean to sell is the deepest cleaning your house has ever received. It is as clean as it was when you moved in. It is cleaning every possible light fixture, every corner, every baseboard, all the furniture is dusted, all the light fixtures are dusted, the ceiling fans, um, the crown molding is dusted. Make sure you get any little creepy crawlies out of the corners. Um, so, and that's clean to sell. Spit shine, polished, as, um, as perfectly clean as you can make it. That way you can easily maintain in between cleanings. Um, you can wipe down those um, cabinets or countertops real quick before showing. Um, you're going to want to touch up your paint inside and out. Again, that's a really important thing to make your house look fresh and well-maintained. Um, 
clean at a minimum or if needed, replace carpets. Make sure that the padding is fresh, that the carpet looks really good. If there are any cracks or leaks in your windows or faucets or anything in your, in your drywall, any settlement cracks, anything, go ahead and get those taken care of. That leaky faucet that has never really bothered you but might bother a buyer, go ahead and get that taken care of. Wash your windows inside and out. People remember the inside of the windows, but often forget the outside of the windows. It makes a huge difference. Replace any light bulbs that have been burned out or any that are on their way to being burned out. And if possible, you're gonna to wanna to put daylight or natural light light bulbs in your house. The, um, the soft light really does make a room sometimes show yellow. And if you've got yellow tones in your paint, you, it's really gonna enhance that and that's not what you want. You want things to look as bright and light as possible. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, if you have any questions, please feel free to throw those into the chat box and we will take care of those um, at the end. Uh, so that's step three. Step four is to dress it up. The goal of this step is to create a positive first impression of the house. And that is going to include your curb appeal, your exterior lighting, and any staging of your house. So curb appeal, when we talk about that, we're talking about that first feeling when people drive up to your house. I recommend fresh mulch. It can hide a multitude of sins and it really does brighten up the landscaping. Get all of your trees trimmed and your bushes trimmed up so that nothing is looking overgrown. Um, if you've got any bare spaces, maybe supplement with some new shrubs or some color. Color looks great. If you look at the, the picture of the house in the middle, it's got some great pops of color by the front of the house. Um, those are super pretty and easy, easy to do. Um, another thing you might want to consider is painting or repainting your front door. Um, Black is probably the most popular color for a front door, but you want to get it, make sure it looks freshly painted. Um, a power washer helps a lot too. You get the little, get the dust and the, any grime or, or um, growth off of the surfaces. Um, make sure your lawn is well kept and maintained and do that throughout the time your house is on the market. Um, lighting, your exterior lighting, if you look at the house on the bottom right, it has beautiful, beautiful exterior lighting. So you want to make sure that if someone is seeing your house in the evening, that all the exterior lights are um, new. Maybe you add some, maybe some really inexpensive, some solar lighting along the, the front walk path can make a really great impression. Um, and then in terms of staging, if you look at the home on the bottom left, that is some staging that we did in a property that, that we had listed and it was a vacant house. So ideally a home sells best and shows best when it is occupied, but if you're going to thin, thin out the, um, the amount of furniture in a room, the easiest thing to do is to walk into a room and do a visual scan of it and see where your eye stops. And if your eye, if you don't, if you're not able to get all the way around the room in one sweep without having your eyes stop and get stuck on something, then you're good. If you walk into a room and it feels sort of cluttered, maybe take about half of the furniture out and then reposition everything and see how it goes. Um, generally, you walk into a room and you want the biggest piece of furniture opposite the door. So that kind of anchors the room. Um, in terms of accessories, you're gonna want no more than three um, on a surface. 
So a little collection of three is perfect. Any more than that tends to look like clutter. If you've got a space that is kind of an awkward little space and you don't know what it's for and you've never really used it for anything, go ahead and work with your real estate professional to create an, a purpose for that space. So let's say you've been using your dining room as an office. Go ahead and turn that back into a dining room. Or you've got an extra bedroom that you've been using as a workout room. That's totally fine. Just make sure that you don't that it's not crammed full of big heavy pieces of furniture. Go ahead and thin those out, make a decision about it. Do you love it enough to pay to move it? If you don't, go ahead and donate it, um, give it away, sell it, um, any, anything like that. You wanna make sure that people's eyes can move through a room and that they can see the amount of space that's in a room. So you're gonna to wanna to give a purpose to every room and show how life would be lived in that house. So if you've got a little nook, maybe you put a little writing table and a chair <clears throat> so that people can see that that's a great little sort of bill pay area. Um, if you're like a lot of us, you've got that desk in your kitchen that was built in, <clears throat> go ahead and give that a purpose. Um, showcase your house so that ideally how people want to live in it is how the buyers see your house. So um, those are the four steps to getting your house ready. You're going to declutter, depersonalize, neutralize. You're going to do the little things and then you're going to dress the house up. Um, that's it guys it's 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 that simple and it's that complicated at the same time and and um please know that we are here to help however we can um if you've got any questions feel free to email us or message us offline but we appreciate you thank you for your time and attention and i hope everybody has a great day that's it thank you so much have a great one. Bye.